And that is so important to remember because, and, and hopefully it's more encouraging to honor them because it's like, I'm by honoring them, I'm honoring me. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another semester of Ignite where we discuss hot topics here Ooh. on our campus. I am your host, Aaron Patterson, and I am here today with our new co-host, Jonna Bakioki. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here, and I cannot wait to see what the semester is going to have in store for us, conversation-wise. It's going to be amazing. Yes. I'm sorry, I voice cracked on live. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a random fact about yourself. A random fact about myself. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm, I'm Argentinian, but I'm also Italian, and I do not like pasta. <laughs> I get a lot of a lot of hate for that. I am not a pasta girl. Bakioki is kind of like gnocchi. Back, I bit. do like gnocchi. Okay. I'm not a fan of any other pasta, but Picky. I will I will eat a bowl of gnocchi. Gotcha. It's pretty good. Good, good. So, Aaron, because you asked me a question, I feel mm. like it's only fair that only I ask fair. you a question. Yep. So, tell me a fun fact about yourself. So, no, because of boundaries. <laughs> so, I'm not going to tell you a fun fact about myself, which is a perfect segue into our conversation today, which is all about setting boundaries. Yes, boundaries, how to set them, how to not be a jerk while setting the boundaries, Aaron. Rude. Join us today as we talk about this and more with Portland podcaster Catherine Murillo in today's interview. It's going to be good. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us here today as we're going to be um, approaching this conversation on boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful to be here with the both of you, and I'm excited to jump into this conversation. It's, it's so good to see you again. Catherine, or Catherine immediately won my heart over because she complimented my hair. She and, did, she uh, did. No, it's like one day Fabulous week. hair. You got good hair. You got good hair. It makes me very happy. We can talk about this, but let's talk about boundaries instead. But before we get into that, how is Portland right now? Uh, yeah, I am in Portland, Oregon. The sun is starting to come out. And it's been really gloomy all day, but other than that, I'm grateful. We don't get a whole lot of sun in Portland. We're still kind of mm -hmm. recovering from summer and transitioning. So I'm, I'm taking all the sun I possibly can in before it goes away. We know you talk some about boundaries, but you were saying you do TikTok and other things as well. Yeah, I really enjoy the platform. It's been such an amazing vessel to reach people that I would never reach mm -hmm. in different countries and different states. and. I think that's the beauty of the internet that sometimes we can forget about because I know I'm somebody that gets off because I'm like, it's consuming, it's distracting, but there's a really beautiful part of it as well. And Absolutely. That's Absolutely. I mean, uh, so many people cite TikTok as a source for so many things. I have one class that said, yeah, TikTok is a possible citation source. Just make sure you run it by me first. So it's a, it's it's a legitimate really thing. educational. Right. A hundred percent. So I know we're talking a lot about TikTok and I waste a lot of time on the app. I know you just took a, a whole like hiatus for a month from all social media. Was that something to do with time boundaries? That definitely has to do with boundaries for ourselves, right? Because sometimes, I don't know if you guys know, you can set limits on your phone as far as like how much time you spend on an app. And that's great, but you can also dismiss it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it, it's great some way, right? And then when we ignore it, which is so very, uh, is, so is very yeah. <laughs> related to boundaries. But as far as taking time off, I do that. I've done that for a couple years now where I usually take like six to nine months off. Oh, wow. But this time I only took 30 days and it was, it was needed and it was appreciated. What do spiritual boundaries look like in Portland? Cause I mean, we're, we're here in the Bible bet and, or Bible bet <laughs> belt, right? In, Bible in Tennessee, isn't that what they call <laughs> yeah. it? So like we go out and talk about God and everyone's on the same page, but Portland, oh, wow. very different from here. Yeah. We don't just, are, we're not just supposed to surround ourselves with people that believe like us and think like us. However, we're also not supposed to be consumed with the world. However, we're supposed to be in the world. So that's where boundaries mm. come in, right? So I'm supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. And so it's it's a very fine line of where where do you put those boundaries? So I absolutely, I'm going to throw some Jesus in everything that I do. And there's people that's not going to settle well with. And here's the thing. People will not always be okay with your boundaries. They are not for them. They are for you. And when we make boundaries to make everybody comfortable, yet we are making ourselves uncomfortable, you have to ask yourself, is this a compromise? I'm, is, this, is this willing for this compromise? Yeah. So I think a lot of times within just the setting that I'm in, as far as being usually the only Christian, I make it known, I, you have to first be secure with yourself. 
it because it, it can be intimidating to be like oh yeah i love jesus if everyone else is like no we hate him you know and it just is all the more reason to show them god's love mm-hmm. it's not like all of you are doomed you know it's like yeah. i'm so sorry like you mm-hmm. have there's normally hurt there let's dive into that like what there's hurt that happened yeah getting to the bottom of what that actually is all about. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and personally, like, I love what you said about being in the world, but not of the world, because as Christians, that's exactly what Jesus calls us to do. Like, he calls us to go into those places. Like, he was friends with, like, the tax collectors and all the people that everybody kind of, like, looked down upon or kind of, you know, hesitated to interact with. So I would ask you, how do you see being able to cultivate and grow friendship with those people who don't, who do not necessarily believe the same way that you do and set those boundaries healthily uh, without them feeling judged and or I, segregated? I want to pop in here also because you said boundaries are for you. They're, yeah. they're, you're setting them for you. A lot of times this doesn't, this gets lost in translation. So how do people know, you know, you're not trying to hurt their feelings. This mm, is yeah. for you. You, we cannot control how others feel. Mm. So if me, me honoring my boundary hurts your feelings, I can be sorry that what I've done that's best for me has hurt you. However, that still does not mean that I now need to compromise what works best for me Mm. to make you comfortable. My boundaries are not to make you comfortable, right? So at the end of the day, something I really live by is if I know my truth and God knows my truth, Mm -hmm. there's nobody else I need to over explain myself to because I think that's what happens. Like, oh, but I don't want them to like think and I don't want them to, and we can go down this whole rabbit hole when really if this is my boundary and this is what I have agreed that I don't cross and some, and Sometimes you may hurt somebody's feelings. Again, you can have empathy for them without um, compromising your own boundaries. But you, that's, that, that is the hard part of setting right. boundaries. It's, if, if it were easy, everyone would do it. Right. So how do the boundaries that you set look different between boundaries for yourself, for other people, and friendship and relationship? What does the contrast look like between those different areas? I think I have a core set of values and I think it's really important that you as well get familiar with, all righty, what are these core things that no matter what person, what relationship, these are my core beliefs, mm. values, and boundaries that I hold. And I, I, in the Bible, it says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Mm-hmm. That is so important because that is really the whole concept of honoring our boundaries. It can be really easy like, oh, well, with this person, because I, maybe it's a relationship. You're like, well, I really like them. So listen, at the end of the day, nobody can negotiate with us like us. I always say nobody can negotiate with me like me. But if we are very clear with where our yes is and where our no is, it's going to be a lot easier to start honoring and setting those boundaries. And so they may dip. The core stays the same. The only difference within those relationships are maybe there's uh maybe there's a little bit of history in that relationship that now i maybe have to implement stronger boundaries Mm. because of certain things that have happened within that relationship but other than that i have a very core set you know that that i carry throughout the relationships in my life so Mm. this may be kind of a hot take would it be reasonable to argue that if you can't set boundaries for yourself you can't really set them for Mm. other people or with other people i mean i show people how to treat us it shows right? people how to treat us. We show people how to treat mm. us. Mm. So if I'm not honoring them, how can I say, Aaron, I need you to honor them? Mm. If I might, if you're seeing me break boundary after boundary, you're like, bet I very much understand. Mm. I, you know, when we break our own boundaries, we break our trust with ourselves. Mm. And that is so important to remember because, and, and hopefully it's more encouraging to honor them because it's like, I'm, by honoring them, I'm honoring me. Mm. This is a stupid anecdote. I'm working on this kind of thing, like self-discipline, not in huge areas, but in the small ones. Yeah. So I yeah. started setting my, my phone on the opposite side of my room at night so oh, that this is smart. I this don't is good. snooze it in the morning. <laughs> but that is not stupid, right? Because <laughs> all of these small details really create the fabric of our day. Yeah. And so these small changes that's what ultimately leads to bigger changes. So I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thank it is you. a good I'm idea. I want to implement that inside my <laughs> own daily routine. I got to do that. So how does how does this whole what is the balance there? I mean, setting the boundaries on setting the boundaries with yourself. When does self preservation turn into selfishness? How do you mm. how do you gauge that well? 
Ooh, that's a, that's a great question. And question I think maybe. it's a very fine line because I think that really you have to take that to God, hmm. right? That's something only you can answer because God knows your heart. Hmm. And so when you take him your heart and say, God, is this, is this me honoring my boundaries or is this deeper than that? Hmm. Is this me just not wanting to do it? Is, is this me just not wanting to show up and like asking God can fix my heart, you know, give me that discernment to determine which it is. But I really think that when you have peace about something, normally that means you're on the right path about it. If you don't have, and here, I want to be clear though. Sometimes you may not have peace in the moment about setting that boundary because mm -hmm. again, it may be uncomfortable. There may be difficult conversations, as human beings, we don't like conflict. We'll do anything to avoid conflict or tough conversations. So we're like, no, I'm okay with that. It's fine. And we internalize that. Mm. We, it builds resentment. It builds anger. And then, you know, six months later, we're like, well, remember that time? You know, so mm. we do that. So really having those tough conversations in the moment is really respecting yourself and that relationship. Hmm. Mm. That's wow. Valuable. <laughs> yeah, no. So like one thing that I've seen for myself is that I kind of uh, like let those things build, like kind of like what like what you were saying in like the resentment area, like you just kind of let it go, like let it go. But you're not actually letting it go. It's mm. building, but behind the scenes. And then there comes a point where I'm like, hey, hey, girl. So, you know, X, Y, Z. And then you kind of bring it to surface. How do you go about being able to have this conversation at the appropriate time while respecting the other person, but also bringing forth your thoughts and opinions in a constructive manner without, you know, tearing down like the other person and, you know, hurting their feelings? That's a great question. And it really comes back to we cannot control how other people feel. Mm -hmm. We can't control how other people are going to respond to us, you know, and uh, risk is a part of faith. We have to continue to take risks because that's what stepping out in faith is. Mm -hmm. And when we have those conversations, it can be risky. We don't know how the other person is going to respond. And that can be really hard, especially when it's somebody that means a lot to us. And of course, we never want to hurt anybody. But sometimes voicing our own opinions will hurt others at times. Voicing how we someone made us feel may make them be like, well, I'm offended you think that way. You know, we cannot control how someone responds. So you have to go into that conversation knowing that you're meaning this from the most loving place, mm. that you're honoring yourself. You know this is a conversation that you need to have. But then also understanding that I cannot come in with expectations that they're just going to give me a hug and we're going to sing Kumbaya at the end. Mm -hmm. I have to understand that this may not go the way I want. So God, please give me the peace and the strength to deal whatever unfolds from this. Wow, that's so good. I saw, <clears throat> since we were talking about TikTok, I'm bringing yeah. it up again. I saw a TikTok the other day. It was like uh, a girl talking about boundaries that my, my husband and I have set or boyfriend and I have set uh, for schools. And she started listing things off and it was like, don't ever text another girl or mm. don't ever be in the same room as another girl. <laughs> and it was like, try not, try to avoid female professors or professors of the wow. opposite gender. It's like, holy cow. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm super interested. Society kind of gives setting boundaries a bad rap. And is it things like that that are building onto it? What, mm. why, why does setting boundaries yeah. have such a negative connotation? So that doesn't sound like boundaries to me. Those sound like rules. Yep. Right? Mm, wow. So uh, there's, I think people, there's a difference between healthy boundaries because that does not sound healthy, mm. right? Don't look at another woman. Mm. Don't be in the vicinity, right? <laughs> little That's unfair. Fair yeah. point. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that, that doesn't sound like healthy round boundaries. That sounds like rules that you're setting for somebody. Mm. And so it is really, I think that was a great thing you brought up because it's really important that we also distinguish Am I setting a rule here? Mm -hmm. Am I am I being like it's my way or the highway? Mm -hmm. Or am I actually doing things that are honoring? Is this is this honoring God by honoring me with mm -hmm. this boundary that I've set here versus mm -hmm. you know being someone that just wants to be in control of another person and how they live their life. Yeah. Well, this is good because it also kind of answers uh, another question, which is what's the difference between boundaries and, and manipulation? Yeah. 
it's, mm. it's going to God about yeah. it because it can quickly turn into that kind of thing. Hundred percent. Well, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I mean, I was going to say like a lot of times, also as humans, I think that that we stray away from being controlled, and a lot of times when we face these conversations as to you know confrontation about a boundary, a lot of times we view somebody setting a boundary as somebody setting a rule for us, and we don't like being controlled. Mm -hmm. Like we don't like that feeling, and so I guess my question is how do you know that you're setting boundaries based off of also on feelings and then kind of going back to what you said earlier on acting on discernment and acting on peace mm -hmm. how do you know when you're setting out a boundary based off of that discernment rather than just your human emotions that can lead you Such astray a good question that is a really good question and i'm gonna try and unpack it so i think it really <laughs> it comes back to god Mm -hmm. Right. It comes back to the peace you feel when you're asking God is search my heart, mm -hmm. search my heart and let me know if, if, if this is the best thing to honor you and to honor me, search my heart to know that I'm not making this from a place of manipulation, mm -hmm. that I'm not making this a place of control that search my heart and give me the peace to know that this truly is what I need to, I, I like to look at boundaries a lot as protection. And when mm. we have peace, we want to protect that peace. Mm. And so what boundaries help you protect that peace wow. that you have, the peace that, that that space in your life, what helps protect that? Mm. Yeah, so you keep bringing back the theme, obvious theme is go to God, go to God, go to God. Yeah. How does all of this translate directly into a, a relationship with God? All yeah. the stuff we've talked about. I mean, I think you can have boundaries that protect that relationship, mm -hmm. right? You have boundaries that this is how much intentional time I have each day. This is, I, I've, I've committed to reading the word X amount of times, whether it's every day, every other day. Mm -hmm. These are the boundaries that I have set for myself. How am I going to honor these boundaries that I now have with this relationship? Because mm -hmm. A, a big part of relationships is we are protective of the person. I feel like that's how we should also feel with God. We should feel protective of that time with him, that space with him, that relationship with him. And we're all going to protect that differently. So those oh. boundaries will look different. That's so beautiful. And I love how God is just inserted in every single one of your answers. Like it's so clear mm -hmm. that, and like the Bible talks about how like we speak from the overflow of our heart. And it's so clear mm -hmm. that just Christ is so present in your heart and in your character and in your thoughts and in the words that it is that like you're speaking to us mm -hmm. right now in this conversation. It's so beautiful. And Aaron and I are so blessed to be able to have this conversation with yes, you. Yes, Catherine, you're clearly a light here in, here in the oh room talking with us, but also very much so in Portland. I'm yes. sure. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. And, and, and Aaron and I this. are looking to be able to hire a life coach for our yeah. own lives because yeah. this was so help, like helpful and beneficial for me. I know that. We'll send you an email after the meeting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, send me an email. I so appreciate this conversation. I love what you guys are doing here in this program. You guys are being a light to not only the campus, but to the people all around you the fact that you are putting you have a platform and you're placing god at the center mm -hmm. of that that <laughs> that platform it's such a blessing and thank i'm so, so grateful to have been a part of it so thank you guys thank you thank you we'll talk to you later yes have a good day thank you guys. Bye. bye catherine Thank you guys so much for tuning in to watch this interview. I know that I personally learned so much from Catherine. I think she's, first of all, so well-spoken, so well-articulated. Mm -hmm. And I love how she brought God into right. every single question. Right. It's easy to be an expert on the topic, but to also be Christ-centered is um, a really rare thing. Oh, my goodness. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the, the YouTube channel, like, like the video, and then follow us on Instagram so you can see all of our stuff. Yes. Thank you so much, and we will see you again next time. Bye. Thank you.